Hey there, I am Maruf Said, a microbiologist and a science educator. Science is my passion and I'm here to share it with you. On the Public Health Unit 1 Making Healthy Choices Today we will learn about the eyes. But before starting this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button. Table of content includes the structure of the eye, the eye's perception, and lastly conclusion. Let's start the video with a brief introduction of the eyes. Your eyes are the true portal to the rest of the world. Shape, color, brightness and movement are all things they can sense. Your eyes can read a novel or assess a baseball's curve. They can witness a blazing sunset fade to black or a baby's bright smile. So let's learn about the structure of the eyes. With the help of this diagram, you will understand the cross-section of the eye. The eye is a sensitive organ to work with. All components of the eye must operate properly for humans to see clearly. The eye has to be carefully guarded. The head is bone protected from harm. Unwanted light and dirt are blocked away by the eyelids. The surface of the eye is kept moist and clean by tears from adjacent ducts. The victorious humor is surrounded by the eye. The eye is protected by the outer layer which is made up of strong tissues. The eye is nourished by a network of blood vessels in the middle layer. The inner layer is made up of light-sensitive cells that allow the eye to see. The surface layer The whites of your eyes may be seen when you gaze in the mirror. The seclera is a strong, fibrous tissue that covers the white of the eye. The cornea is a protrusion in the front center of the eye. It is transparent, almost round structure that acts as a window for light to enter the eye's other layers. A thin coating of tears provides essential smoothness for the cornea to be crystal transparent. The conjunctiva is a transparent membrane that borders the inner surface of the eyelid. It also protects the cornea in the front of the eye. Next layer is the middle layer. Light enters the pupil through the cornea. The pupil is a circular aperture surrounded by muscles that control how much light enters the eye. The pupil enlarges when the illumination is faint. When the light is bright, the pupil shrink to block part of it from entering the eye. Muscles in the iris regulate the size of the pupil. The iris is a colorful circle that surrounds the pupil and includes many little muscles. The iris might seem brown, blue, green or gray depending on the amount and type of color it contains. Blood vessels in the middle layer of eye tissue provide food to the muscles of the iris. The choroid is a structure that includes many blood veins. The middle layer of the eye suspends a lens behind the pupil. The lens is a flexible structure that aligns light rays in the eye's inner layer so that they can come together. The focus is the place where all of the light beams intersect. To guide light beams to the correct focal point, the lens must continually change form. The lens has a natural curved shape. Tiny muscles, on the other hand, enable it to flatten or curve more to focus on objects that are far away or close by. Next layer is the inner layer. Light falls on the retina after passing through the lens. The retina is the portion of the eye that receives light rays and converts them to electrical signals which are subsequently translated into pictures. The term retina comes from the Latin word reti which means net. The network of blood vessels that run through the retina is referred to as this. Nerve terminals that deliver and receive messages are known as receptors. Photoreceptors are light-sensitive receptors in the retina. When exposed to light, pigments in the photoreceptor change color. The reaction is comparable to how the chemicals on the photographic film change when exposed to light. The pictures created on the retina, unlike those created on photographic paper, are not permanent. 
Cones are photoreceptors that detect color but are not very sensitive to light. Only during the day or in bright light is there enough light to stimulate the cones. Three different types of cones detect three different colors. Cones are receptive to red, blues and greens. Your eyes can mix these colors just as you do when you adjust the color on a television set. The mixture allows you to see a wide range of colors and shades of colors. You may observe a broad range of hues and shades of colors thanks to the combination. The fovea is a tiny yellow area in the middle rear of the retina. There are a lot of cones in the fovea but there aren't any rods. The fovea lets you see the objects in amazing detail while you are in strong light. The fovea on the other hand does not generate good pictures in weak light because it lacks rod. There are no rods or cones in another tiny region of the retina towards the center. As a result, light falling on the blind spot will not produce a picture. The blind spot is where the optic nerve connects to the eye. If you have reached till here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow my social media handles. Next is the eye perception. The optic nerve is a bundle of nerve fibers that sends information to the brain. When light contacts retina rods and cones, chemical changes occur which result in electrical signals or nerve impulses. The impulses are sent to the optic nerve which delivers the messages to the brain through nerve fibers at the base of the photoreceptors. The pictures acquired by each eye must also be coordinated by the brain. The perspectives are slightly different even though both eyes may focus on the same thing at the same time. This is due to the fact that each eye's location is somewhat different. Each eye can see objects in an oval shape pattern in front and to the side of the eye when it is gazing straight ahead. Although the two patterns are similar, they are not identical. The mechanism by which the brain assembles these disparate pictures is known as stereoscopic vision. You can see in three dimensions and assess depth using stereoscopic vision. Peripheral vision is caused by a minor variation in the position of each eye. The process of seeing objects on the sides of your eyes is known as peripheral vision. You can see out of the corners of your eyes with peripheral vision. Lastly, let's conclude this video. The eye is a complicated and sensitive organ. It can analyze images and modify and align light beams. It has the ability to convert a picture into electrical signal and transmit that signal to the brain for interpretation. You can evaluate depth and look to the sides because of your eyes function together. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.